ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله عباد الله اوصيكم ونفسي الخاطئه اولا بتقوى الله عز وجل قال عز من قائل بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون فقال سبحانه يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما Brothers and sisters in Islam One of the greatest blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us is the ni'mah of al-aql, is the ni'mah of the intellect which is capable of discerning the truth from falsehood yet subhanallah sometimes we do cloud our mind with negative thoughts and negative assumptions and subhanallah that those negative things lead us lead us astray from the path of righteousness and indeed the way we think indeed the way we have assumptions uh, does shape our reality does shape our future does shape our actions and subhanallah when we we often hear the word su al-dhan su al-dhan which you can translate in english to um, bad assumptions thinking ill of others having ill um, suspicion and subhanallah non-evidenced doubting and subhanallah we all have an initial idea of what su'ul dhan is but subhanallah today we want to take um, a deeper dive into the concept of su'ul dhan and inshallah uh, explain what is related to it so scholars when they speak about su'ul dhan and from now on i will be referring to bad assumptions as su'ul dhan throughout the khutbah so scholars, when they speak about Surah al Ban, they put it in two ranks, in two types. The first type was Surah al Ban, Billahi Azza wa Jal, bad assumptions of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, thinking ill of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. The second type is Surah al Ban, Bi'ibadi Allahi Azza wa Jal, thinking ill of the servants of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, means thinking ill of each other, of one each other. And Subhanallah, the first type is the worst type. سوء الظن بالله أسوأ أنواع سوء الظن بالله عز وجل وهو من الكبائر وقد يصل إلى الكفر في بعض الأحيان sometimes thinking of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and his messengers and his prophets sometimes not reach the extent of kufr as as scholars mention and it's deemed as one of the major sins as Ibn al-Qayyim رحمة الله عليه mentioned and سوء الظن بالله عز وجل can take many forms from different perspectives the first perspective, the first form of it is mentioned in Surah Fussilat. And Surah Fussilat is one of the most beautiful surah. All Quran is beautiful. But this, this surah in particular, I want you to read it quite often. And especially the verses from verse 19 to verse 23. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Fussilat. وَيَوْمَ يُحْشَرُ أَعْدَاءُ اللَّهِ إِلَى النَّارِ فَهُمْ يُوزَعُونَ There will be a day in which the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be gathered in the hellfire, in our jahannam. حَتَّى إِذَا مَا جَاءُوهَا شَهِدَ عَلَيْهِمْ سَمْعُهُمْ وَأَبْصَارُهُمْ وَجُلُودُهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Once they come to it, once they arrive at our jahannam, their sana, their their hearing will attest, will testify against them. Their eyesight will testify against them. Their skins will testify against them. And scholars mention that the skins is just kinaya and the private parts. It's like a, a masking the word private parts with the word skin. They will testify against you. So now the honor of these parts, the honor of these limbs will have a conversation, an inner conversation with himself, with your parts. I can control my, my hand in the dunya, I can freeze it, I can, I can control it, put it down. But in the akhir, no. 
وقالوا لجلودهم لما شهدتم علينا؟ I'm advocating, I'm advocating on your behalf. I want to protect you from Nar Jahannam because if you testify against me, we're going to Nar Jahannam because of the sins we made. We committed. وقالوا لجلودهم لما شهدتم علينا؟ Why are you testifying against us? They said, قالوا قالوا انطقنا الله الذي انطق كل شيء. الله سبحانه وتعالى made us speak. But that made everything to speak. وهو خلقكم اول مرة واليه ترجعون. He is the first, he is سبحانه وتعالى who created you with the first time and to whom you shall return. That's why we, we, we spoke. وما كنتم تستترون ان يشهد عليكم عليكم سمعكم ولا ابصاركم ولا جلودكم. And you weren't like properly protecting yourself. And you weren't like, you haven't been hiding against yourself, lest your ears and and, and your, your eyesight and your body. You couldn't do this. You weren't hiding yourself. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and your, your parts will speak to you and will say, You thought Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't know much of what you do. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't see you. That's, that's basically what your, your parts testified against you. That's what they said. وَلَكِنْ ظَنَنْتُمْ ظَنَنْتُمْ ظَنْ It's related to our topic. You thought, you assumed this, that Allah doesn't know. وَذَلِكُمْ وَذَلِكُمْ ظَنُّكُمْ الَّذِي ظَنَنْتُمْ بِرَبِّكُمْ إِيش أَرْدَاكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And that is the exact idea, that, that's the exact assumption that you had about your, your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala that just like led you to your, to your destruction. أَرْدَاكُمْ مِنَ الرَّدَى الرَّدَى هُوَ الْهَلَاكِ Destruction. Because of that ill thought, that's what happened to you. فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And now you are among the losers, among the utter uh, losers. SubhanAllah, when you, when you read the tafsir of this verse and what the scholars mention about this, Al-Imam Al-Tabari, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, Sahib Al-Tafsir, he was narrating upon Al-Hasan, Al-Hasan Al-Basri. Al-Hasan Al-Basri, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, are speaking about a person who is one of the teachers of the, of the, of the four scholars. Imam Abu Hanifa, another Hanifa, Malik, Shafi, wa Ahmad, Rahmatullahi Alayhi. He's a big scholar, that's, that's, what, that's what I want to say. When he recited قُلْ لَا عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَذَلِكُمْ ظَنُّكُمُ الَّذِي ظَنَنْتُمْ بِرَبِّكُمْ He was saying that فَقَالَ إِنَّمَا عَمَلُ النَّاسِ عَلَىٰ قَدْرِ ظَنِّهِمْ بِرَبِّهِمْ People in this dunya, they act, they act to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they perform deeds based on the way they think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَأَمَّا الْمُؤْمِنْ فَيُحْتِنُ الظَّنَّ بِرَبِّهِ فَيَعْمَلُ صَالِحًا The mu'min, the believer, thinks highly of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And since he thinks highly of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this entails performing good deeds. Good deeds. وَأَمَّا الْكَافِرُ وَالْمُنَافِقُ The kafir, the, the disbeliever, and the munafiq, the hypocrite, أَسَاءَ الظَّنْ بِاللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ They thought ill of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and because of that, they misperformed. They couldn't, they couldn't perform good deeds. The same exact person, which is Al-Hasan Al-Basri, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, as Ibn Qayyim and Ibn Jawzi and Al-Qurtubi mentioned in their, in their books. They used to see him crying a lot. Yani, Al-Hasan Al-Basri used to cry a lot, SubhanAllah. Subhan and, and he is one of the biggest imams and one of the biggest scholars in Assassinism, in Tasawwuf and in, in, in Suluk. Qeel Al-Hasan, Naraka Kathir Al-Buka, we see you crying a lot, what's wrong with you? What is the point why you're crying a lot? قَالَ أَخَافُ أَنْ يَطْرَحَنِ اللَّهُ فِي النَّارِ وَلَا يُبَالِ I'm afraid that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will throw me to the hellfire and he will never care about myself. He will never care. He will never care about me. ثُمَّ قَالَ And then he said, إِنَّ أَقْوَامًا أَلْهَتْهُمْ أَمَانِ الْمَغْفِرَةِ There are people in the dunya who were deceived by the by the wrong wishes that Allah will forgive them. And they didn't do good. They were thinking highly of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Forgive me, Allah is all forgiving. Allah is, will accept my repentance, and He doesn't repent. He's insisting on the dhunub. He is immersing in more and more dhunub as, as time marches. Where's his maqam? In the qawman al hatum amani al maqfira, hatta kharatu mina dunya bi ghayi tawbah. There are a lot of people who were in this state, and it stayed with them until the very end, and they just left the dunya, they exited the dunya without the tawbah. He says, 
I, I think highly of Allah. Allah is all forgiving, right? Allah says this in the Quran. Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. He forgives his sins. قالوا قالوا نحسن الظن بربنا بل كذب وقد كذب they are just they are just lied لو كان أحسن الظن بأحسن العمل if he truly thought highly of Allah سبحانه وتعالى then they would have performed the performed the deeds and سبحان الله this is one of the forms that when it comes to uh, not being properly mindful of Allah سبحانه وتعالى not being properly fearful of him subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the thing is, we need to understand there, that there is a balance between al-khawf wa raja. Khawf, you are fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second thing is optimism. You have, you have high hopes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to combine these two things. We have to understand that they, they walk hand to hand. You can't, you can't just like take, take one part of the ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Ghafir, He says, Ghafir al-dham wa qabil al-tawb, shadeed al Ghafir al-Dhamb, he is the forgiver of the sin. Qabir al-Tawb, he, he who accepts the, the repentance of his servant, Jadid al aqal His punishment is severe. You cannot take half of the ayah and leave the other. Ghafir al-Dhamb, Ghafir al-Dhamb, wa Qabir al-Tawb. That's a khalas. That's no one, Jadid al-Aqal. His punishment is severe, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yattawi la ilaha illallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in Surah al-Hijr, he says, Nabbi al-Ibadi, إني أنا الغفور الرحيم يا محمد صلى الله على محمد وعلى آل محمد. Tell my servants that I'm أنا الغفور I'm the all forgiving, uh, the all forgiving and the most merciful. What is the next verse? وأن عذابي هو العذاب الأليم and my punishment is the severest. Be careful. And that's why there is a hadith upon the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. It's a hadith صحيح. It's a hadith قدسي actually. It's a hadith قدسي where Ibn Hibban al Bayhaqi rahmatullahi alayhi, they report upon Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu, the Sahabi. Abu Huraira, the Sahabi, narrates upon the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, narrates upon Allah azza wa jal. It's a hadith Qudsi called. It's called hadith Qudsi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this hadith and, and memorizes this hadith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa'izzati, I swear by my, my might, by my might, or all minds. لا أجمع على عبدي أمنين ولا خوفين. I will never combine two fears and two securities for my servant. What does that mean? Allah سبحانه وتعالى says, إن خافني في الدنيا أمنته في الآخرة. If he fears me in the dunya, I will make him secure and safe in the آخرة. وإن أمنني في الدنيا and if he takes me for granted in the dunya, yeah, let me say it like this. You take Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for granted. Ya ammi, dhunub, adi, Allah yaghfir dhunub. Allah does forgive all of the sins, adi. We will, we will make a tawbah at some point. Amin tamakra Allah azza wa jal. You look at it as a safe thing. Allah is not forgiving. Wrong hopes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In khafani fi dunya, in amirani fi dunya, khawwaftu fi akhir. I will make him fearful in the Akhirah. Don't ask me about the punishment of the Lord SWT. May Allah forgive us. And SubhanAllah, the hadith of the Prophet where he says, uh, it's another hadith Qudsi as well, it's the mission of Sahih Bukhari. It's actually a great upon Bukhari and Muslim. Uh, where Allah SWT says in the, in the long hadith, I am to my servant, I'm as my servant expects me to be, which means that the, 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 the forgiveness and the acceptance of repentance from Allah, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is subject to his servant, the way you think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And subhanAllah, as we mentioned, balance is really important here. Khawf wa raja, tamshi ala jaddati al-khawf wa raja, tajma' baynahuma. You don't go to the extreme of being fearful and Allah will never forgive me, Allah will go to the now jahannam. No, 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 don't go to that extreme. And you don't go that I will be committing sins and I will repent at some point. No, you follow the golden mean. I do commit sins, I do fall into sins. May Allah forgive me, I will work harder, I will perform more good deeds, I will try to, to lessen my, my, my bad deeds. The second form of Su al dhan Billah Azza wa Jal, the second form is, is a more of a worldly form actually, is when Imam al Shafi'i rahmatullahi alayhi was asked, and Imam uh, Abu Na'im mentioned this in Hayat al Awliya. Imam al Shafi'i rahmatullahi alayhi was, was once asked, Ma huwa Su al What is Su al dhan can you describe to us what is Su'adhan, Ya Imam Shafi'i Rahmatullahi So he said, 
Alwaswasa. Alwaswasa means um, being a meticulous person. Oh, you're always fearful of what, what's going to happen. Oh, I'm not going to pass my exam. Oh, I'm not going to get the job. Oh, not, this is going to happen to me. We're going to have an accident. Uh, you're always fearful. You're always like not in, trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is one type of soul of you're always expecting a musibah to inflict you. You're always thinking that I'm gonna fail my exam. Also, Subhanahu took the you took the you took the asbab, took the means. If you're winging it, apparently you're gonna fail. But if you took the asbab, it's fine. Why would you think of the end of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? وَتَرَقُبُ Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will will take this name from me. I know at some point, very very soon. One of my family will die, right? This is so Allah Azza wa Jal. And he mentions, and he, he continues, Rahmatullah, he says, Kullu ha min su'il dhani bar rahman al rahim. And notice that he picked al rahman and al rahim. And subhanAllah, the last form of su'il dhani in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are many forms that I mentioned, I just picked the ones that are relevant to our context. Which is su'il dhani bar Allah Azza wa Jal, and especially this is applicable to our context with Palestine, our brothers and sisters, and what is happening to them there. Su'adun billah azza wa jalla that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never grant victory to his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the followers of the Prophet and his deen. The Ummah of Islam will be terminated. What's happening now, the Ummah of Islam will be terminated. Su'adun. Su'adun billah azza wa jalla. You are not believing in the promise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made in the Quran, which will be accomplished. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Surah Yunus, he says, uh, at the end of the day, eventually, our servants are the ones who will, who will prevail. And this is how we accomplish our promises, subhanAllah. In Ghazwat Kuhud, we spoke about Ghazwat before, but I want to touch up on a perspective that I didn't speak about. When Ghazwat Kuhud basically was one of the first, uh, we don't want to call it lusts, we want to call it a joy. It was a qarh, it was a qarh, it was a it was a, it's a, it's a wound to the ummah back then. It was the first battle to be lost in a way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the distress in, the, in Surah Ali Iran he mentions ثُمَّ أَنزَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ الْغَمِّ أَمَنَةً نُعَاسًا يَغْشَى طَائِفَةً مِنْكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the distress he sent down an inner peace in the hearts of the believers. That overwhelmed, that overwhelmed a faction of you. And another faction, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described them. He said, وَطَائِفَةٌ قَدْ أَهَمَّتْهُمْ أَنفُسُهُمْ يَظُنُّونَ بِاللَّهِ غَيَرَ الْحَقِّ وَنَّ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ There's another faction who are thinking about themselves only. They weren't thinking about Muslims or what happened. And they were part of the Munaqeen, the hypocrites. يَظُنُّونَ بِاللَّهِ غَيَرَ الْحَقِّ They think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala other than truth. Allah described their one, the way they think of him, as the the, um, the the thoughts of ignorance, of the ignorant states, days of ignorance, basically. prior to the Prophet. So basically they were saying, like, how come after this lust, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give the Prophet a nasr, will give him a victory? How come this is gonna happen? There is no way, we just lost a war, we just lost a battle. How come? This is so Allah. And that's why Ibn Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi commented on this and he said, Fussi Rasul al-Dhani huna bi'inna Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la yasul al-Rasul So al-Dhan, the ill thinking that they had, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never stand by his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa anna amrahu sayyid mahil and the affair of Islam will diminish. Wa anna hu yusallimuhu lil-qatl and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not caring about his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And, and, and some people went to the extreme where they said like this is happening out of the irada, out of the destiny that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed. Look at, at how subhanAllah shaitan takes you in the levels. And subhanAllah, and this is basically the, the, last, the three types of su'a dhan in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's another type of su'a dhan, that now we're going to segue to the second type, which is su'a dhan in the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thinking ill of the servants of Allah, thinking of well, one each other basically. So we mentioned that Su'adhan Billah, Kibirah Min Kibar, Rabbi Yisrael Al-Kufu. Also, Su'adhan in people might be considered, uh, actually, Imam Al-Haytham, Rahmatullah Ali, mentioned it as, a, as one of the major sins as well, in his book called Zawajah. He, he deemed it as one of the major sins. And to see Adhan, Biman Zahiruhu Al-Adalatu Min Al-Muslimin, Kibirah Min Al-Kabar, to think ill of a person, 
who is only apparent on the outer side, on the outer form, he's a person who is on the Sunnah and, and he's a Muslim and he's a he's, he's good guy. He's a well mannered person and yet you do so well, this is a woman of the bad. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the book, in Surah Al-Hujurat, Ya ayyuhu al-ladheena amanu jitaniku kathiran min al-dhan. Inna barab al-dhan ni ishim. In the translation they say, Oh, you believe, avoid much suspicion. Indeed, some suspicion, some suspicions are sins. Till the end of the verse. And subhanAllah, in the era, in this current era of social media, and weird in-person communications, we encounter many instances where, subhanAllah, we are overwhelmed by negative thoughts and bad assumptions. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu has agreed upon in the hadith. He says, Avoid suspicion because suspicion is the, is the worst or the, is the worst of false tales. And SubhanAllah, it happens in this order. Like SubhanAllah, nowadays, how does it go? And we want to understand how the shaitan tricks us into this. We need to understand how the shaitan, we have to know the ala'ib of shaitan, the tricks of the shaitan. And SubhanAllah, Surah al -Ban of people is intrinsically har har uh, harming us in the first place. You are basically exhausting yourself, number one. Exhausting your emotions, wasting your time, wasting your energy, and so what? On false scenarios, Aslan. The Shaitan starts, for example, a brother or a sister says something to you. That, whether it's vague or clear, a brother or a sister says something to you in person. Or sends you a, a, a message on Instagram, Facebook, Messenger, TikTok, whatever the, the social platform is. And subhanAllah, most of those social platforms are just like low fidelity ones. Like, there is no tone for the message. Or probably they put, they put an emoji. And you just like, keep thinking about it. And subhanAllah, shaitan starts with overthinking the message. You just like, keep staring at it for the whole night. What, what do they mean by this? Of course she means this. Of course he is referring to a situation that happened 10 years ago. And subhanAllah, you start dragging the history, you start dragging old events into your present. What is this? What is the point of this? Does the shaitan stop here? No. And subhanAllah, you are the recipient of the message and the message might arrive to you and you are in a situation or in a state of frustration. You have an exam, you have a, you have a midterm, you have a, an interview, you have something and you are frustrated. You won't be reading the message as it should be read. And subhanAllah, the shaitan adds fuel to the fire. The shaitan, and this is a very important point, a very important note that we don't pay attention to actually. The shaitan starts generating evil scenarios, evil scripts that are irrelevant, that are imaginary, and subhanAllah, look how it gets more convoluted and convoluted and convoluted and more distant and complex. One message took you, took you this deep, thinking about something that didn't even happen. He sent, he sent a message and started thinking about he wants to kill you. To that extent, the shaitan is really good at this thing. The shaitan doesn't stop here asla. And keep in, mind, keep in mind, the shaitan doesn't stop here because you allow him to do so. It's not because he has a, a power over you. He's not, You don't have a power over my servants. That's what Allah says in the Quran. But you allow, you allow this, you allow the flow of this dirty river of thoughts and, and, and negative assumptions. And subhanAllah, it takes, it takes this idea, a cartoon, a thicker of He takes it to another level. Now, let's take it to the uh, practical level. Let's verbalize it. Let's start sharing these negative thoughts. And subhanAllah, once you fall into this, khalas, it's a sin, one, number one. Number two, you fall in another, you fall in another sin, which is what? al -hiba. Something happened between myself and an ex person, and subhanAllah, what happens? You go and you start sharing it with someone else to, to alleviate whatever is happening. Ghiba or su'ban, subhanAllah. A kimbal, yani synth over a synth. Why the solution was really easy? It's connected. And subhanAllah, all of this that stems from one message or one emoji that you just overthought. Is at the expense of your peace of mind, your hasanat, your relationship with the person, and your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why, that's why in Umar uh, al-Khattab, the Farooq, 
as Ibn Abd al-Bar mentioned in, in Tamheed, he used to say that يحل لمرئ المسلم سمع من أخيه كلمة يظن بها سوءا لا يحل له وهو يجد لها مخرجة It's not permissible for a person to think ill of a person uh, to, to think ill of his brother uh, because of a word that came out of his mouth as long as he can find an exit to it probably he meant this that's why some of the predecessors, five predecessors, Salaf al Salih, they used to say, look for 70 excuses for your brother. Yeah, I mean, probably he is having a bad day. Probably he's in a rush. That's why he said the message, that's why the message wasn't that respectful. Give excuses, and subhanAllah, we're going to mention this in a minute. Uh, sometimes you see a brother who is, a brother or a sister who is known to be a good person on the outer. You see him in a suspicious place, in a weird place. And subhanAllah, he is known not to go there. It, yani you know him that he's a person who doesn't do public, uh, who doesn't do public sense. He doesn't publicize his sense. We are, we are all sinners at the end of the day. But subhanAllah, there's a big difference between a person who publicizes it and he's a part of it, and a person who is just like, um, Allah did sit there for me, Allah protecting me, and Allah is covering me with his beautiful cover. Khas, I'm gonna keep it to myself. There's a big difference. There might be some ill thoughts that will cross your mind initially. Then the way there will be some ill, Ill, Ill thoughts that will pass, you, pass by you when you see him in such a place or any similar case. Those ideas, those thoughts are fine. As long as and under the condition of expelling them out right away. It's fine, you have, you have no control over them. The, the idea just passed by your head or just came across your mind. Expel it out. Do not let it settle in your, in your heart. And do not act upon it. Because the moment, what does that mean? Wait, 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 what does that mean? What does it mean not to let it settle in your heart? And what does it mean not to act upon it? The scholars say if a doubt that is not based on a solid proof, if a doubt basically changes the way you think about the person or changes the way you interact with the person, then that's the sin itself. As you have know, we mentioned, alhamdulillah. That's the haram thing. Because you are changing the a whole relationship based on what? Conjecture. Not a fact, it's just an assumption that you made. And how many problems we face nowadays because of this? And subhanAllah, one of the forms, one of the common forms nowadays that we see is what Aisha radiallahu anha, the mother of the believers, the, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, narrated upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as Ben Maja mentions. He, she says, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, in the, uh, إن أعظم الناس فرية إن أعظم الناس فرية رجلا رجل هاج رجلا فهاج القبيلة بأسرها. The greatest transgressor of people, the greatest ظالم among people, is a person uh, or liar is a person who satirizes or a person who is, who is insulting another person. Two people, one is insulting the other. The other goes and insults him and his whole tribe and his whole nation. How does this happen nowadays? SubhanAllah, we are stereotyping in a terrible way where we go Egyptians, Syrians, Iraqis, Lebanese, Pakistanis, all of those, they are all like this. Sometimes it happens as a joke, but if, do, if you are doing this with i'tiqad in your heart, you're actually believing this, you have to, you have to revise yourself. This happens a lot. All of Lebanese, all of uh, Syrians, all of whatever, they, they are like this. One of the biggest Forms of transgression is this. And the last point that I want to mention is one of the reasons why so often thinking ill of people happen. And to be honest, I like to call it the, the complex of inferiority or pushing inner heat away from myself. What does that mean? Abu Talib al Makki, he says, So abdanni ma wanantahu min su irai kafi. So su al basically happens due to many reasons. One of them is because you have a you have a wrong idea, uh, uh, an ill thought of the person. You are bearing some negative feelings in your hearts. You are bearing a grudge against this person. That's why you are thinking of him. You have a bad intention. Or and listen to this. This is one of the hidden things in our soul that we don't pay attention to. أو خبث حال خبث حال تعرفها فيك فتقيسها على أخيك فتحمل فتحمل حال أخيك عليها وتقيس وتقيس وتقيسه بها. which means 
you, have, you are insecure from the inside about, about a specific point. I'm going to give some examples now. You are insecure from the inside about one of the specific one about about a point, and you see your brother in a suspicious place or suspicious situation that is kind of connected to the to the complex of inferiority the inferiority complex you have. What do you do? The shaitan comes to you, and at this point you start thinking that oh, okay, um, I'm not a bad person. You start like prevailing as the hero here, and you just take the inner heat and these ill thoughts and you just put, give it a uh, dump it on her. It's you. Who is this? It's you who is this? What an example this is. SubhanAllah, nowadays, when you see a brother who is praying, who starts praying, yani, and you go and, and you're a person and you're, you're, your salah is kind of shaky, you're not praying that much, yani, you're trying to be on the deen. Munafiq. Murai. Yura'i nas. He is showing off. Kayf al Who told you? A person who recites Quran. A person who recites Quran, and probably subhanAllah he has khushur, he got emotional with his recitation. He is leading people in a prayer, or you're praying behind him probably, or you're listening to him. And he starts crying. And subhanAllah you start thinking that and you start like deeply rooting this idea. He's a murabi. He's a hypocrite. Why is he crying for people? Did you open his heart and see, is he murabi or not? Is he showing off or not? How come? Who appointed you as an agent between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his servants? Same thing sometimes with some sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides one of the sisters to wear hijab. Alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of our sisters wearing hijab and help them in their journey. Allahumma ameen. She wears the hijab. Alhamdulillah. And a brother or a sister comes. What do they say? Riya? Nifaq. Riya or Nifaq kit out of having them. من علمك بهذا؟ يوحى إليك بهذا؟ Do you receive revelation? Allah told you that they are munafiq or she is doing this for sake of showing as a practicing woman. Who told you this? مش شغلك. It's none of your business. The Prophet How can you give yourself these privileges? The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم himself didn't give himself these privileges. And he is the Prophet who is مؤيد بالوحي. He is supported by the wahi of Allah. The revelation of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. In in the hadith where he says. I wasn't asked, I wasn't sent to open people's heart and see whether Iman got into their heart or not. Not open their, their, their stomachs and see that they are they eating from halal money or not. It's not. The Prophet doesn't do this. So how come you put yourself in such a rank and do this? So working on such a working on eliminating this sin. Uh, or habit from your life and, and cultivating the sense of husn al thinking highly of people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the first place, Allah al will unload a massive burden off your shoulders. Allah al min It will level up your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the first place. Number two, it will level up your relationship with people. And it will be one of the main means to be granted al qalb al that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned as one of the greatest assets in the day of judgment, uh, where Allah where Ibrahim alayhi salam was making dua and he said, Wala tukhzini yawma yub'athun, yawma la yanfa'u ma'lum wa la banun, illa man ata Allah bi qalbin sayin. Only the person with a sound heart who come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be rescued, will survive that day. So we ask Allah azza wa jalla to grant us a qalb sayin and to protect our inner and outer parts from speaking of people and thinking of people. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله ولكم تستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله وكفى وصلاة المسلمين على عباده الذين اصطفى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له. وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. We take this khutbah as a as a starting point, إن شاء الله, to fix our life in this perspective. So we want some practical steps or a piece of advice so we can cultivate the sense of personal fun and avoid so fun. First of all, remember to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Doing istiqal, saying أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. Making du'a. Allah سبحانه وتعالى taught us a beautiful du'a in Surah Al-Hashr that the Sahaba said. 
And it has been, subhanAllah, when we hear the stories of people who, who were committed to this dua, we We think that they are one of the most, there are people with the purest hearts on the planet. May Allah protect them. The dua is, in Surah Al-Hajr, I think it's the 10th the verse, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِإِخْوَارِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَا بِالْإِيمَانِ وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلًّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ رَؤُوفَ رُحِيمٌ Beautiful dua, Allah al It basically says, our Lord, Ya Allah, forgive us and our brothers who preceded us in, in faith. And put, don't put in our hearts, heart feelings, resentment, uh, negative emotions towards them. Uh, those who believe, رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ رَؤُوفَ رُحِيمٌ Our Lord, indeed, you are kind and merciful. So always, do mean keep, keep, yani, keep yourself in the state of dua. Whenever such an idea come to you, a, a negative idea, it's all the whispers of the shaitan, as we mentioned before. This is all the tricks of the shaitan. Be committed to this dua where you say, Allahumma aslih qalbi. Some people, some scholars who used to say, they were committed to this dua saying, Allahumma aslih qalbi, oh Allah fix my heart. Because if your heart is fixed, your whole thing is fixed, your whole life is fixed. So always say, Ya Allah fix my heart, Ya Allah make me among, uh, Ya Allah grant me a qalb salim, a sound heart. Number two, it's not an easy thing, you have to strive at this point. It's, it's as we said, it's, it's a riyala, it's like more of an exercise where you cut these flows of ideas, of negative ideas, every time they come to you. It's striving against, against oneself when it comes to these ideas. Whispers of the shaitan. Think of something else. Try to, to try to busy yourself with anything else once these ideas come. Number three, try to humble down yourself. Whenever you think that you are better than someone, because most of these whispers, most of the ill thinking of others comes before of ansuriya, of racism in our hearts, or arrogance. Try to humble down yourself. Remember your sins. And remember how few deeds you have, good deeds. And ask Allah to fix your situation. Uh, number three, which is an important point, do not put yourself in suspicious situations. Now we spoke about us, how we should interact when the ideas, when, when these negative ideas come to us. But for those who happen to be in such a situation, don't put yourself in it. Aslan. Don't put yourself in a, in a suspicious situation. And there's a story narrated upon some of the Salaf. There were two people, there were two Imams of Hadith, and they're like one of the greatest, they're Tabi'is, Aslan, they're one of the followers. One of them named Al A'mash. Al A'mash. A'mash means, he has Amash. Amash means his eyesight is so weak and um, it keeps tearing like at all times. Another Imam, Imam Abdul Rahman bin Hummus, his name is Al-Araj. His name is not Al-Araj actually. Al-Araj is just a limp. He has a limp in his leg. He cannot walk properly. So one time they wanted to go to a market, to a public place, and the Imam al uh, Imam al Amash said, let's not go. Because يعني, now if we walk in the public street, they will see us. يعني, they will, they will mock us. They will see like an Amash, an Araj, a blind person, and a person who's limping at the same time. What is this? This will open the door of the Shaitan to be mocked, to, to do ghibah for them. An Araj, this was said by the Amash. Araj did he say, Rahmatullah? He said, Who cares? I'm getting the Hasanat anyway. When we get the Hasanat, they get the Atham. Who cares? Why did they open their mouth? An Amash, Rahmatullah, this is one of the very elevated ranks. Yeah, and this story should be taken as one way to elevate ourselves. We want to elevate when it comes to spirituality. Look at those people, how pure, how their hearts are so pure. He said, We shouldn't go there. Let's safeguard ourselves and save them. What is the point if we get the utter, they get the ithim? What is the point of this? They will be punished for this. They are brothers. So always don't put yourself in suspicious situations. Okay? Uh, number four, which is good company. Yani Imam Ibn Hibban, which is a Hazm al Busti, Bahadabadi says in the Rawda. Sohbatu al Ashrar, Sebabu, or Turi to Su al Dhamil al Akhyar. Think uh, having yani, bad company will be one of the means that you think out of the good people. 
So make sure that you pick good people that help you. Whenever you want to speak, whenever you want to share a negative idea, they will tell you, stop it guys, be fearful. You're, you're doing backbiting now, you know it's hell. Those people are the real ones that you have to stick to. So we ask Allah to grant us a good company, to grant us a, a, a sound heart, inshallah, to grant us husn al fun in Him subhanahu wa ta'ala and people. اللهم اهدنا فيما هديت وعافنا فيما عافيت وتولنا فيما توليت اللهم انصر عبادك المستضعفين في غزة اللهم كلهم خير ناصر ومعين يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم عليك بأعدائهم يا أرحم الراحمين يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم عليك بأعداء هذا الدين اللهم عليك بأعداء الملة والدين يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم احقن دماءهم انصرهم على من عداهم يا أرحم الراحمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم وأقيموا الصلاة